what happens when you take six of the most incredible modern superbikes in Ride 5, all in stock configuration, and unleash them on one of the most iconic tracks in the world? Can the lowest rated Kawasaki set the quickest lap time? Let's find out. We've got the Kawasaki ZX-10R, the Honda CBR-1000 Fireblade, the BMW S1000RR, the Aprilia RSV4 Factory, the Suzuki GSX-1000R, and the Yamaha R1M. All with performance points ranging from 801 to 836, we made a choice here to stay under 840 points in stock configuration to keep a level playing field. Which one will clock the fastest lap time around Mugello? And which one will steal our hearts as the most fun to ride? Stick around, because the results are going to blow your mind. BMW S1000RR from 2020? The underdog that knows how to have fun? When it comes to cornering, the BMW scores a 3 out of 5. It offers precision but can surprise you with moments of instability. Braking is where the BMW shines, scoring a 4 out of 5. It's stable and committed. Like that trusty anchor, you can always rely on when things get a little too fast. Acceleration sits at a comfortable 3 out of 5. It's not going to blow your mind, but it won't leave you hanging either. As for top speed, the bike clocks in at 306 kph, earning it a 3 out of 5. It's not the fastest kid on the block, but it's not lagging behind either. Now let's talk about the riding experience. The BMW S1000RR scores a solid 4 out of 5 here. Steering this bike around Mugello was an absolute pleasure. It's like dancing with a partner who knows all the right moves, but doesn't steal the spotlight. The bike may not feel very fast, but it gives you the sensation of speed, making every lap an exhilarating experience. Before we wrap up, let's not forget about the BMW higher spec sibling, the M1000RR. It falls outside of our 800 to 840 performance points range, but rest assured, we'll be exploring these high performance beasts in a future episode. So if you're all about pushing the limits, you won't want to miss that. Yamaha R1M from 2020, the cornering maestro with a twist. When it comes to cornering, the Yamaha R1M is nothing short of a revelation, scoring a perfect 5 out of 5. This bike is the epitome of stability and precision. Imagine a gymnast sticking the landing every single time. That's the R1M in the corners. It stays on its line and is capable of cornering speeds that would make your jaw drop. Braking is another area where the Yamaha excels, also scoring a 5 out of 5. The bike feels like it's on a rope when trail braking into corners. It's as if you have an invisible hand guiding you, ensuring you decelerate with pinpoint accuracy. It's super steady, making it a dream for those who love to push the limits of braking. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The Yamaha falls short in acceleration, scoring a mere two out of five. It's a bit like having a sports car with an economy engine. It won't shoot you off the line like a rocket, but it compensates with its cornering prowess. Top speed is another area where the Yamaha lags, clocking the lowest at 305 km per hour and scoring a 2 out of 5. It's not sluggish by any means, but in this high-octane group, it's the tortoise among hares. Now, let's talk about the riding experience. The Yamaha scores a 3 out of 5 here. It's a bit of a paradox. The bike handles like it's on rails, but that almost makes it feel a little too perfect. Bordering on boring and lifeless, it's like listening to a musician hit every note flawlessly, but lacking the emotional depth that turns a performance into an experience. The Yamaha R1M is a cornering maestro with a twist. It may not be the complete package, but it's a bike that excels so much in certain areas that it, it's impossible to ignore. The Kawasaki ZX-10R from 2021. The wild card of the bunch, when it comes to cornering, the Kawasaki is a bit of a wild card, scoring a 2 out of 5. With the lowest performance points in our lineup, this bike is like that daredevil friend who's always up for an adventure, but can be a bit unpredictable. It feels loose and unstable, especially when you're pushing it to its limits. It's not the bike you choose for a precision lap, but it's the one you'd pick for a roller coaster ride. Braking is average, landing the Kawasaki a 3 out of 5. 
It's steady in hard braking zones, but tends to dance around a bit when you're braking for quicker corners. It's like having a reliable parachute that occasionally gives you a little jolt just to keep things interesting. Acceleration is where the Kawasaki shines, scoring a 4 out of 5. This bike shifts through gears like a dream and powers out of corners with Gasto. It feels like that sprinter who may not win the marathon, but will definitely impress you in a 100 meter dash. Top speed is a bit of a letdown, clocking in at 305 kilometers per hour and scoring a 2 out of 5. It's on par with the Yamaha, but doesn't quite measure up to the rest of the pack. Now let's talk about the riding experience. The Kawasaki scores a whopping 5 out of 5 here. This bike is the epitome of fun. It might throw you a curveball now and then, but hey, we're in a video game, so no harm, no foul. The monstrous sounds from the exhaust add to the exhilarating experience, making every lap a joy ride you won't forget. In summary, the Kawasaki ZX-10RR is the wild card of the bunch. It may not be the fastest or the most stable, but it's undoubtedly the most fun. If you're looking for a bike that'll keep you on the edge of your seat, this is the one to pick. The Aprilia RSV4 Factory E5 from 2021. The Italian Stallion with a need for speed. Starting with cornering, the Aprilia scores a solid 4 out of 5. With its advanced aerodynamics and technical features, you'd expect this bike to be a cornering god. While it doesn't quite reach divine status, it's pretty darn close. The bike goes where you want it to, but it leaves you feeling like it could offer just a bit more. It's like a gourmet meal that's missing that final sprinkle of seasoning. Braking is where the Aprilia shows its wild side. Scoring a two out of five, this bike is a spectacle both to ride and to watch, but not necessarily for the right reasons. The rear end dances around like a salsa dancer when you're braking hard, making it a thrilling, but not so efficient experience. It's the kind of bike that makes you feel like a stuntman, for better or worse. Acceleration is the Aprilia's forte, earning a perfect five out of five. This bike rockets out of corners like it's been shot out of a cannon. The front grip is phenomenal, making you feel like you're on rails as you blast out of turns. It's like hitting the turbo boost in a Mario Kart game, pure adrenaline. Top speed is another area where the Aprilia shines, clocking the highest speed of 310 kilometers per hour and scoring a five out of five. This bike has a need for speed and it's not shy about it. It's like the sprinter who also wins marathons, a rare breed indeed. As for the riding experience, the Aprilia scores a 4 out of 5. While the overall feel might be a bit stale, the bike comes alive when you're breaking into corners. The sliding and drifting make for an incredibly fun experience, like you're in a high-speed ballet of rubber and asphalt. To sum it up, the Aprilia Ars V4 Factory is the Italian stallion you'd want in your stable if you're looking for speed and excitement. And let's not forget, this is the best Aprilia has to offer. There's no higher spec model to outshine it, Suzuki GSX R1000R from 2020, the jack of all trades. Starting off with cornering, the Suzuki scores a commendable four out of five. It's stable and confident in the bends, but it has a tendency to understeer on corner exits. It's like that student who aces the test, but forgets to put their name on the paper. So close to perfection, but missing that final touch. This understeer can sometimes lead to invalidated laps or the need to ease off the throttle to stay within the lines. Braking is a bit of a mixed bag, earning the Suzuki a two out of five. Much like the Aprilia, the rear end of this bike likes to dance around when braking. It can get floaty in fast corners, causing you to miss the apex when you're pushing the limits. Acceleration is where the Suzuki shines, scoring a four out of five. This bike is a powerhouse coming out of corners. It puts the power down effortlessly, but this strength is also its weakness, leading to the aforementioned understeer. Top speed is middle of the road, clocking in at 306 kilometers per hour and earning a three out of five. It's neither the fastest nor the slowest in this lineup, making it the reliable middle child of the group. As for the riding experience, the Suzuki scores a three out of five. It doesn't particularly excel in any one area, but it's not a slouch either. It's the jack of all trades, but master of none, offering a balanced but somewhat unremarkable experience. In summary, the Suzuki GSX R1000RE is a well-rounded bike that offers a bit of everything. It may not stand out in any particular category, but it's a solid choice for those who want a balanced ride.
Honda CBR1000RR Fireblade SP from 2022, the cornering conductor with a symphony of speed. When it comes to cornering, the Honda is a maestro, scoring a perfect 5 out of 5. It's like a conductor leading an orchestra. Every move is precise, every note is perfect, the bike is incredibly responsive to throttle inputs and goes exactly where you want it to, making it a dream to steer through corners. Braking is another strong suit, earning the Honda A4 out of 5. It's capable of hard, steady braking, but tends to wobble a bit when trail braking into lean angles. It's like a gymnast sticking the landing, but wobbling slightly on the dismount. Impressive, but not flawless. Acceleration is where the Honda truly shines, scoring a 5 out of 5. This bike comes out of corners like a bat out of hell, but manages to stay on its line like it's on rails. It's the perfect blend of power and precision, making it a joy to accelerate out of turns. Top speed is commendable, clocking in at 307 kph and earning a 4 out of 5. While it's not quite as fast as the Aprilia, it's still a cut above the rest, making it a strong contender in the speed department. As for the riding experience, the Honda scores a 4 out of 5. It's an incredible bike to ride, offering a harmonious blend of cornering and acceleration. While it may not have the same wild spirit as the Kawasaki, it delivers a strong, consistent performance that's hard to beat. To sum it up, the Honda CBR1000R Fireblade SP is like a well-conducted symphony. Every element works in harmony to create a ride that's both exhilarating and efficient. It's a bike that ticks almost all the boxes, making it a top pick for those who want a balanced yet thrilling ride. And now the grand finale, the battle of the lap times. First up, we have the BMW, clocking in a respectable lap time of 1 minute 52.5. A solid performance, but as we move on, you'll see it's got some stiff competition. Next, we have the Yamaha, which absolutely smashed it with a lap time of 1 minute 51.8. That's almost a full second faster than the BMW. The Yamaha set the bar high, but could any of the other bikes catch up? Enter the Kawasaki, the wild card of the bunch. Despite its thrilling ride, it clocked the slowest time of 1 minute 52.9. It may not win the race, but it'll win your heart with its exhilarating experience. Now let's talk about the Aprilia. With all its aero bits and the highest top speed, you'd expect this Italian stallion to be a front runner. But it posted a rather disappointing time of 1 minute 52.2? It's like having a Ferrari, but getting beaten by a Mustang. It's fast, but not fast enough. The Suzuki was the dark horse in this race. Despite its quirks, it managed to clock a surprising lap time of 1 minute 52.1, beating the Aprilia. It's the underdog story we all love to see. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the Honda Fireblade. Drum roll, please. It clocked the fastest lap time of 1 minute 51.6, narrowly edging out the Yamaha. Given its highest performance points of 836, this shouldn't come as a surprise, but it's still an incredible feat. So there you have it, folks. The Honda takes the crown for the fastest lap time, but each bike has its own unique strengths and weaknesses. Whether you're looking for speed, stability, or just a thrilling ride, there's a bike here for every kind of rider. Before we wrap up, we've got to give a special shout out to the Kawasaki. While it may not have clocked the fastest time, it was hands down the most fun to ride. It's a wild ride, but oh boy, is it a fun one? If you're looking for thrills in a bike that'll keep you on the edge of your seat, the Kawasaki is your go-to. We've had an absolute blast putting these modern super bikes through their paces, and we hope you've enjoyed the ride as much as we have. But now, we wanna hear from you. What should we tackle next on the channel? We've got three awesome options for you. One, maxed out super bikes. Should we upgrade these bad boys to the max and see which one improves the most? We could even throw in some super bikes with higher performance points than 840 to spice things up. Two, different bike category. Are you curious about super sports or racing modified bikes? Let us know if you want us to switch gears and explore a whole new category. Three, pre-2020 super bikes. Should we take a trip down memory lane and check out some of the superbikes released before 2020? We've got some classics like the Panigale and the KTMs waiting in the wings.
Drop your choice in the comments below, and let's make the next episode even more epic. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you never miss out on the fun. That's it for today, folks. Keep gaming, keep riding, and as always, keep chasing that joy. This is Game Joy Tactics, signing off.